Hi there, and welcome to another episode of uh, Inkscape Tutorials here on Brush for Hire. Uh, we are going to be working today on setting up templates. It's a very simple process, and we'll walk through uh, how to do that in just a second. Uh, the reason that you would make a template is essentially to have any type of formatting or work that you do on every single uh, document that you work on already there and ready to go as soon as you uh, create a new document. So first we're going to launch Inkscape and we will switch over here to the screen. There we are. Okay, so we've launched and we've got our default template loaded here. So it is currently a 12 by 12, uh, which is fine. Um, some of the things that you might want to change uh, are going to be under document properties. Uh, you can change the default units uh, from inches to centimeters, feet, meters, millimeters, pixels, yada, yada, yada. I work in inches because that's what I'm comfortable with. Uh, feel free to use whatever you want. Uh, you can change the background color. Uh, it comes by default as, I believe it's white, but it is completely transparent. Uh, they've got the opacity turned down to, to uh, zero. Um, and you can also change the size of your document here. I've got mine set to 12 by 12 uh, because it's the, the most basic size that we use. Um, for our uh, laser, we use 12 by 12 sheets and 18 by 24. Uh, sometimes our acrylic comes in 12 by 24, but for the most part, we leave it as 12 by 12 and just change it as necessary. So, um, you can change up all of these things here really easily, and whenever you're done, you don't even have to click save anywhere, you just close it out. So, uh, let's, let's make a template. Um, let's say that we are working on a, a, a piece of material that's 12 by 12. Let's say it's still acrylic, uh, but we want to have some guidelines around the edge to define a safe working area. So, uh, like we did in our previous video, we use rulers here to give us some, some little guidelines. I'm just going to grab and drag those from the, uh, the borders there, and we're just going to make ourselves a, a little thin box area that's going to keep us from going all the way out to the edges. Uh, so we've we've created our our ruler guideline box, and this will this will help us just visually keep things away from the edges. Um, and so, if we wanted to make this a template, we can just go up here and we can go to Save As. And uh, the path for this this particular location is uh, at least in Windows is C, Program Files. Um, and if you're running a 64-bit operating system, it's going to be in the program files with the parentheses x86 next to it to denote this is a 32-bit application. Uh, in that folder, you're going to go to Inkscape, and then Share, and then Templates. So we've got C, Program Files, x86, Inkscape, Share, Templates. Inside that folder are all of your default templates. Um, we're going to save this one as acrylic. We'll just call it acrylic. And we'll click Save. And now uh, we can. We're going to close out the application, and we will relaunch it. I'm not even positive you have to do that. I don't think you do. Uh, but just to show you that we're starting out with the default template again, and then we're going to go to New up at the top, and we see acrylic in our list now. So we click acrylic, and we have our rulers again. So there we have it. Um, really quick and easy way to to set up a template to get you jump started in the right direction. You can set this to whatever size is your your uh, your default working size. Uh, change up the color background, change up the units that you're working in, uh, add rulers and all kinds of other things, or even just shapes. If you always have uh, something where you're working on uh, two inch little tokens and things, make yourself a template that has all those two inch tokens already made and you just have to drag icons onto it. Real easy. Um, you can also, another thing to help your workflow is under Inkscape Preferences. And this will be uh, the last thing that we talk about today. Um, under Tools in Inkscape Preferences, you've got uh, all of your, your different tools that show up on the left hand sidebar over here. And uh, the most important ones, in my opinion, are the settings on each of your shape tools. So your rectangle, uh, you have the opportunity to change uh, some aspects of the stroke here. You can say it's a, a red stroke and it's only one pixel wide and it uh, never comes default with a fill. So we don't like fills for, for working with um, the laser cutter so we just leave it at none all the time. You can up that to two pixels or three pixels wide um, and you can change the color if you like. Um, you can also do the same for the ellipse and star and spiral tool all that good stuff. 
Um, you can also change it to, uh, with this radio button up here, last used style. So essentially it just follows whatever style you set it at the time um, and keeps doing it until you change it again. So if you draw a box and say, no, 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 this needs to be green and it needs to be three pixels on the stroke, um, then the next time you draw a box in that file, this time, it will uh, draw it with a three pixel green stroke. So that may be more along the lines of what you want. Uh, so feel free to tinker around with it and, uh, and uh, find the, the settings that work best for you. All right, so uh, the only other thing that we need to talk about with templates is that if you want to change your default template, you go through the exact same process that we did for making this acrylic template, um, except you just save it as the word default. When you go to save it, name it default, it'll replace the existing one. It'll probably ask you, do you want to overwrite this file? You say yes, it replaces it, and then next time you open it, uh, it'll come up with this um, without even having to go to new. So if there's something that you use absolutely every time, um, that's that's a good way to, to get yourself jump started every time you open the program. So. Uh, I want to uh, take the opportunity to say thank you uh, for watching this uh, tutorial and possibly some of the other ones. Um, there will be more of these coming out. We're getting to the end of some of the general overall uh, tools and operations uh, portions of the tutorials for this program. And uh, we're going to be jumping into some practical applications uh, and how to use uh, the tools that we've learned about now to make three-dimensional objects with laser cut materials. So uh, tune in for the next one, which we will we'll be using a, a third-party app uh, on the web to help us uh, speed run through baking boxes and talk a little bit about how finger joints work. So thank you again, and uh, peace, ugh, please feel free <laughs> to uh, leave comments uh, or questions here. You can also email us about uh, any of this or uh, about projects that you'd like us to work with you on at brushforhire.minis at gmail.com. That'll be in the description below, or go over to brushforhire.com right here on the page, and um, uh, you can send us a, a message through our... our um, our contact page. Uh, you can also see some of the examples of the laser cut kits that we make right now uh, and uh, through those other means of communication feel free to uh, send us any designs that you're working on and we'll get you a quote for cutting them for you. Uh, thank you all and join us for future installments of this. Thank you and happy designing slash wargaming.